is this dress? Blue with black lace or white with gold lace? Those were the two sets of very different colors most people saw when this wedding dress was posted by a lady in Scotland in 2015. When the musicians arrived for the wedding, they reposted the picture and it got over 4 million tweets. Blue and black or white and gold? Celebrities from all over the world chimed in on what colors they saw. Soon, neuroscientists were commenting and publishing papers about it. Yet, despite all this attention, there is no clear answer on why different people perceive different colors for the same object. In the same year, I attended an event at the World Science Festival, where Alan Alda asked an obvious but impossible question. What is color? He talked about how different people may see the same thing differently. I was seven and captivated. I recently conducted an experiment to test our perceptions of reality with another illusion. It's called the Benham's disc. You can see it here. It's just a spinning disc. What colors do you see on this disc? You may not see colors through the screen, but when people saw this illusion live, they saw colors ranging from earthy greens to bright pinks and everything in between. When the disc stops, look what's on it. It has no colors. It's entirely black and white. The colors perceived when looking at the spinning disc are called Fechner or imaginary colors. The colors on this disc are subjective. Some people see bright colors, while others see pastel shades, and some people see gray and black blurs. And curiously, such imagined perceptions exist not only for our physical reality, but they can also exist for our social reality. For now, continuing with the black and white disc, why do we see any colors at all? Even though this disc has been studied for over 100 years, scientists still don't know the exact answer to this question. I wanted to learn more about these imaginary colors. Would these colors behave like real colors? For example, could I change the way we perceive these colors even though they were created entirely inside these perceivers' mind? I began to learn why we see what we do. Scientists show a considerable amount of our supposed reality is actually our perception. Our brain starts with what our senses provide as input, our sensations, and then our brain adds to that interpretation of our input or our perception. Our reality emerges from the connection of sensations with perceptions, and this connection is influenced by what our brain is expecting to see. I wondered what it would take for the brain to change what it perceived. There's a phenomenon called retinal fatigue that actually changes how we see real colors. Imagine this, you stare at a small red square for about a minute and then look at a white paper. What you're going to see is a green square that is the exact same size as the red one. But why would you see green? Well, there are three types of color receptors in our eyes. They're called cones. There are those that are stimulated when you look at red, a second type stimulated by green, and a third type, stimulated by blue. When you stare at the red square, the red cones become so overstimulated that when you look at the white paper, the green cones temporarily take over for the tired red ones. Even though retinal fatigue has been studied extensively with real colors, it has never been tried with imaginary colors. So if it were used with the Benham's disc, would it change the imaginary colors perceived by the brain? What I found was that imaginary colors actually did behave like real colors when it came to retinal fatigue. In fact, 83% of the time, there was a change in the colors perceived. Even though I was influencing color receptors in the eye, which was looking at a black and white disc, the brain was responding by changing what it was crea creating as our perceived reality, as if the disc were actually made up of real colors. I found that the perception of a reality can be so subjective that it can be entirely made up. But more broadly, I learned that when I asked questions and had no judgment or expectations about the answer, my brain could not fill in the narrative, and I could actually discover something new. I started this work trying to understand how our brain perceives imaginary colors. Through this journey, I have realized that our social judgments can also be affected by imaginary perceptions. In fact, our brain elaborates and interprets our reality to fit with scripts and roles that we expect and anticipate. 
Our perception is made up of our own narratives and expectations. If I ask you, imagine a scientist. Do you think of a woman or a man? Research shows that most people think of a man. A few months ago, my science teacher asked my classmates and me to draw a scientist. I immediately drew a woman in that role, but that was not the majority view. Only four out of 83 kids drew women. That's under 5%. What's even more interesting about the experiment is that half of those who drew women actually knew the intent of the experiment, and so they purposely drew women. When I say titles like quantum physicist, surgeon, and mathematician, most of us don't picture women and girls. We are more likely to think of men and boys, but our brain is filling in details based on what we've been told to expect. If you look at the data, unfortunately, these professions have a gender divide. So our brain anticipates and expects that the person is more likely to be male and fills in that detail in our perception. What happens when we take this to the next step? To thinking that this gender divide is real and it exists because there's an actual difference in the capabilities and capacities between men and women. What does this mean for the real inequalities for women and girls in STEM we have now perpetuated based on a perceived illusion? Typically, we ask what something should be or how is it this way? Through my experiments and experience, I have learned that perhaps the more important questions are, why does it have to be this way? And what if there were another way? I started my project trying to change imaginary colors. I found myself changing my imaginary perceptions of what I can and cannot do. I learned that I can question and change my own narratives. I want to invite you to come on this journey with me to individually question and challenge the narratives that are pre-filled for all of us. There is no reason that when I say quantum physicist, surgeon, or mathematician, every one of us, girls, boys, whoever we may be, isn't as likely to think of anyone in that role. We cannot stop at role models or even just with talk of allyship. We have to go beyond the division that limits our perceptions of what is possible. Let me leave you with this request. Let us all disrupt the narratives that stifle us and recreate them in ways that not only make us equal, but let us flourish. We can perceive our own reality. Thank you.